Hello everyone and welcome back to the Swift Academy. In today's video, we are going to talk about the image inside the Swift UI. How you can add image to your app. How you can even using the async image to download the image from a URL or from a web. And how we can actually shape or interact with the image that you just downloaded or you added to your application. There are so many powerful tools in Swift UI that you can use them to create so many beautiful apps. And one of them is the image. You can make your image feel, feed, size, and everything in a very dynamic area. So please subscribe to my channel. I will show you how you can use the power of the Swift UI and using the image component fundamentally to add it to your apps. Be with me, I will show you more. All right, now let's see how we can use the image inside our Swift UI application. So let's first create a new file. Uh, definitely it will be the Swift UI file. I will call it as the image bootcamp and we aren't going to covering the image here. So we need our own custom image. Uh, for that reason, I prepare two images to be added inside our application. But if you remember, we have to add the image or the colors or the customs items that we want into the assets folder. So I will click on the assets folder, bring up my custom image, one Apple and one the Matrix uh, movie cover give it back okay I'm sure that you like the matrix video uh, too much so I'm going to use the matrix movie cover here too so I'm going to delete the text and using the image component as you can see it is going to ask a name of the image so with that uh, just passing the matrix okay and wait a second to our canvas to be loaded. As you can see now, the matrix uh, image that we added into the asset folder, it is now loaded inside our canvas view. So we know that for uh, reshaping it, we have to add the resizable because we want to tell the Swift UI this image can be resized, but it is going to be resized up to the uh, safe areas on the top and bottom and on the leading and trailing side of the canvas or simulator or even the real device. So we want to make it uh, as a real feel because as you can see, it is a little bit uh, squeezed or stretched. So we want to make it as the aspect ratio to be, make it as, okay, we don't want this competition handle at the first and just passing the fit, for example. So it is going to be uh, obeying the content mode as the feed, or we can actually pass the field to. But uh, we learned that we don't need to uh, using the aspect ratio here, make it comment. And I'm going to use directly as the scale to feed. Uh, I will come back to the aspect ratio and talk about the first parameter now. So as you can see, we can pass the scale to feed, or we can even pass the scale to feed directly as a modifier. We don't need to pass in the aspect ratio. But what is the first parameter inside the aspect ratio here? Let me bring up the competition handle of the aspect ratio. So you can see that it is accepting a CG fillout value and the content mode alongside it. I am holding down the option key and hitting the enter to uh, having all the uh, parameters that needed for the aspect ratio. Okay, what is this parameter that CG fillout that we can pass here. Let me uh, choose the feed for the content mode and see what's happening. The aspect ratio number that you can see here, it is the ratio between the height and the width of the image. So if we pass one, it means that the height and width are equal. So it is going to convert it as a, a square image. But uh, we know that it is not an a square image. So if I pass, for example, 1.5, it is going to make it as the uh, the width going to be uh, double than the height 
so uh, it is going to be shaped like that and uh, the content mode it is going to be fixed so maybe in some cases in your application you may need to use and specify this aspect ratio value but be careful about that because it's going to be changing your image accordingly i'm going to make it common and bring back the scale to fit because in that case we can see our image in the original shape also we can add a frame around our image so i'm going to make it 200 by for example 300 and alignment going to be center let's see what's happening here and i want to see if it is already inside our canvas or frame okay as you can see the frame this blue line because we specified the feed it is inside our frame if i make it as the feel as a scale to feel it may going outside of our frame uh, but also it is visible to our view so for that reason to not visible if we have to use the scale to feel we can use another modifier called clipped so by doing that it is going to be cut whatever outside of the our frame and uh, we are going to see only uh, whatever it is inside our frame that we provided here with this clipped we can actually uh, specifying a shape to be clipped to that shape so let's see what am i saying if i am using the clipped let me make it as a comment again and using another uh, line for adding the modifier i'm going to add the clip shape right now so we have a lot of shape inside the swift ui i'm going to create another video uh, about just the shape in the swift ui but to make it familiar with you uh, we, we have the circle shape for example if i pass the clip shape at the circle it is going to make the image um, circle and that's easy or even we can add another shape called rectangular it's going to make our image uh, just like as the rectangular or even we can actually pass the rounded rectangular and it is going to ask about the corner radius we can passing a, a corner radius uh, as you can see uh, it is going to be a rectangular with a corner radius of the 16 right now so there are a lot of shapes that i will cover uh, in the next video but uh, they are these are just the things the small things that we can do with the image here uh, if you remember at the first fifth then we have the resizable i said that it is going to be um, limited to the safe areas that uh, on the top on, and on the bottom if you want to avoiding this safe area on the top and bottom there is a, a mo another modifier called ignore safe area if we pass the ignore safe area it is going to covering the whole view it doesn't matter if the safe area on the top and on the bottom on the various devices of, of iphone how much it is it is going to be covering all the view of the uh, boundaries of your iphone so now let's jump to the other image that we passed and we, we, we called it before as the apple it is an apple logo because it is oversized we are going to use the resizable modifier again and i'm going to add a frame around it and call it as the 200 by 200 and the alignment as the center okay because it is going to be not the original look i'm going to pass the scale to fit to see it as a normal apple logo as it should be uh, we can do all other the things with that image like as the matrix image but one specific thing about this image this apple logo here is that uh, it is a transparent background image it is a png so we can change the color of the uh, image like that by specifying another modifier called foreground color i'm going to pass it as the red 
but it is not going to be affected because we have to tell the Swift UI that using the uh, template as the rendering mode for this specific image. So if it is possible for Swift UI to uh, doing another rendering, uh, it is going to do that and we can pass the foreground color like that to changing the uh, over layer color of that specific image. It is so good because sometimes you are going to uh, using your own image uh, as the icon inside your application and you want to change the foreground color of your icon in the various pages. So you can specify the rendering mode as a template and then passing the foreground color so you can change the color of your image. Okay, now let's talk about one other cool feature inside the Swift UI that you can uh, grab the image from the internet directly. There is a method, uh, there is a component called async image that as you can see here, it is going to take a URL and you, by specifying that URL, behind the scene, it is going to use the URL session, downloading the data and make it as the image and give it back to you. So I'm going to just passing the URL here and it needs an string as the URL address. So I will use the uh, pixel.photos website that uh, each time we call its endpoint, it will be turning us a random image. So if you want to test your application or have a lot of sample image, you can using this website. There is a sample here. I'm going to grab it and come back to our application, paste it here. So pick some that photos, we have a 200 by 300 here. This 200 means that width and the height. Okay, let me hit the play icon on the simulator on the canvas. So as you can see, the async image automatically calling the URL session in the background turret and ask for the image and call it and then convert it to the image and represent it for us. The, the only thing is that uh, we cannot add the resizable directly to the uh, async image because it is not supported. So for that reason, let's take a look at the uh, Apple documentation about the, how we can actually access the image inside the async image method. As you can see, we can have the frame here. It is going to be load uh, the image behind the scene. But when we want to uh, access it to the image, we have to pass another uh, closure to our async co image component. And also, as you can see, it supports a placeholder. It is a cool feature because with the placeholder, the user can wait and see uh, a template image or a loader while the image is going to be loaded. And then we can use other uh, modifiers like frame here. So let me grab this and trying to use that inside our application. So if I pass it here, the placeholder is now a progress view. I'm going to talk about the progress view later, but it is another component inside the Swift UI that uh, we can use it as a loader. So while the image is loading in behind the scene, it is going to show us a placeholder and the placeholder view is going to be a progress view for us. And in that case, you are going to access into the image and we can do all the stuff related to the image that I show you, like the resizable or clipping or other things here in this closure. So the image loaded based on the frame that we specified here. Okay, let me make it be a little bit bigger. And this is the image that we called. There are, there are a lot uh, behind the scene about the async image. I highly encourage you guys to take a look at the Apple documentation to learn more about it. But uh, I think that's enough for the basic stuff that we are going to cover in, inside the uh, this kind of series of the bootcamp. So I hope you like this video and please subscribe to my channel if you didn't do that until now. Uh, until the next time, see ya. Soon.